In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Ghost live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be pres preserved from the generation, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces, be our advocate. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mileribus, se benedictui fructui ventri tu Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocetin ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mileribus, se benedictui fructui ventri tu Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Noceti nora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, e benedictu fructu ventri tui, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, noceti nora mortis nostra. Amen. Welcome to Corridentrix TV. Today, we'll go straight to look at the forces that are leading humanity to disobey the Ten Commandments of God, the forces that have deceived a large part of humanity, making them to believe that God does not exist, the forces that blaspheme God directly, leading human beings to insult and abuse their Creator, the forces that promote the seven capital sins and walk for the destruction of souls. We we'll begin with the message of Our Lady in the Blue Book, given on May 14, 1989. The title is The Huge Red Dragon. The Huge Red Dragon. My Immaculate House is the place of this new spiritual and universal synagogue. You must enter into it through your act of consecration, which commits you to me forever, so that I may unite my voice to yours in calling down upon the church and upon all humanity the gift of a second Pentecost. Only the Spirit of the Lord can bring back humanity to the perfect glorification of God. Only the Spirit of the Lord can renew the church with the splendor of his unity and his sanctity. Only the Spirit of the Lord can overcome the power and the victorious force of the huge red dragon, which in this century of yours has broken loose everywhere in a formidable way to seduce and ensnare all humanity. The huge red dragon is a theistic communism which has spread every, everywhere the error of the denial and of the obstinate rejection of God. The huge red dragon is Marxist athe atheism, which appears with ten horns, namely the power of his means of communication, in order to lead humanity to disobey the Ten Commandments of God, and with seven heads upon, which, upon each of which there is a crown, signs of authority and royalty. The crown heads indicate the nations in which atheistic communism is established and rules with the force of its ideological, political, and military power. The hugeness of the dragon clearly manifests the vastness of the territory occupied by the uncontested reign of atheistic communism. Its color is red because it uses wars and blood as instruments of his numerous conquest. The huge red dragon has succeeded during these years in conquering humanity with the error of theoretical and practical atheism, which has now seduced all the nations of the earth. It has thus succeeded in building up for itself a new civilization without God, materialistic, egoistic, hedonistic, and cold, which cares carries within itself the seeds of corruption and of death. The huge red dragon has the diabolical task of taking all humanity away from the dominion of God, 
from the glorification of the most holy trinity, from the full actualization of the plan of the Father, who by means of the Son has created it for his glory. The Lord has reclothed me with his light, and the Holy Spirit with his divine power. Thus, I appear as a great sign in heaven, a woman clothed with a sun, Apocalypse chapter 12, verse 1, because I have the task of taking humanity away from the dominion of the huge red dragon and of bringing it all back to the perfect glorification of the most holy trinity. For this, I have formed for myself the army of my littlest children in every part of the world, and I'm asking of them that they consecrate themselves to my immaculate heart. Thus, I am holding them to live only for the glory of God by means of faith and charity, and I myself am jealously cultivating them in my heavenly garden. Then each day, I present myself before the throne of the Lord in an act of profound adoration. I open the golden door of my immaculate heart and offer in my arms all these little children of mine, as I say, most holy and divine trinity. At, this, at the moment when you are being universally denied, I present to you the homage of my motherly reparation by means of all these little ones of mine whom I'm forming each day to your greater glorification. Thus again today, from the mass of infants and sucklings, the Lord receives his perfect praise. For sure, blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. That's just the description of what the huge red dragon personifies. The huge red dragon described um, in Apocalypse chapter 12, the one whom St. John mentioned and quickly added that old serpent. His work is to lead human beings to believe that God does not exist so that they may live in a lawless manner in disobedience to the Ten Commandments and the way they like. We'll go quickly to the next one, uh, message 405 which was given on June 3rd, 1989, Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The title is, The Beast Like a Leopard. Beloved sons, today you are gathered in synacles of prayer to celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of your Heavenly Mother. From every part of the world, I have called you to consecrate yourselves to my Immaculate Heart, and you have responded, you have responded with filial love and generosity. I have now formed for myself my army with those children who have accepted my request and have listened to my voice. The time has come when my immaculate heart must be glorified by the church and by all humanity because in these times of the apostasy, of the purification and of the great tribulation, my immaculate heart is the only refuge and the way which leads you to the God of salvation and of peace. Above all, my Immaculate Heart becomes today the sign of my sure victory in the great struggle which is being fought out between the followers of the Hydra Dragon and the followers of the woman clothed with the sun. In this terrible struggle, there comes from the sea to the aid of the dragon a beast like a leopard. If the red dragon is Marxist atheism, the black beast is Freemasonry. The dragon manifests itself in the force of his power. The black beast, on the other hand, acts in the shadow, keeping out of sight, and hides himself in such a way as to enter in, in everywhere. He has the claws of a bear and the mouth of a lion because he walks everywhere with cunning and with the means of social communication, that is to say, true propaganda. The seven heads indicate the various Masonic lodges which act everywhere in a subtle and dangerous way. The black beast has ten horns and on the horns ten crowns, 
which are signs of dominion and royalty, masonry rules and governs throughout the whole world by means of the ten horns. The horn in the biblical world has always been an instrument of amplification, a way of making one's voice better heard, a strong means of communication. For this reason, God communicated his will to his people by means of ten horns which made his laws known, the Ten Commandments. The one who accepts them and observes them walks in life along the road of the divine will, of joy and of peace. The one who does the will of the Father accepts the word of his Son and shares in the redemption accomplished by him. Jesus gives to souls the very divine life through grace that he won for us through his sacrifice carried out on Calvary. The grace of the redemption is communicated by means. The grace of the redemption is communicated by means of the seven sacraments. With grace, there comes implanted in the soul the seeds of supernatural life, which are the virtues. Among these, the most important are the three theological and four cardinal virtues. Faith, hope, charity, prudence, fortitude, justice, and temperance. In the divine son of the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, these virtues germinate, grow, become more and more developed, and thus lead the soul along the luminous way of love and of sanctity. The task of the black beast, namely of Missouri, is that of fighting in a subtle way but tenaciously to obstruct souls from traveling along this way pointed, pointed out by the Father and the Son and lighted up by the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, if the red dragon wants to bring all humanity to do without God, to the denial of God, and therefore spreads the error of atheism, the aim of misery is not to deny God but to blaspheme Him. The beast opens his mouth to utter blasphemies against God, to blaspheme his name and his dwelling place, and against all those who dwell in heaven. Confer Apocalypse chapter 13, verse 6 to 7. The great blasphemy, the greatest blasphemy is that of denying the worship due to God alone by giving it to creatures and to Satan himself. This is why in these times, behind the perverse action of Freemasonry, there are being spread everywhere black masses and satanic cults. Moreover, Missouri asks by every means to prevent souls from being saved, and thus it endeavors to bring to nothing the redemption accomplished by Christ. If the Lord has communicated his law with the Ten Commandments, Freemasonry spreads everywhere through the power of his ten horns, a law which is completely opposed to that of God. To the commandment of the Lord that says, You will have no other gods before me, which we see in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, he builds other false gods before which many today prostrate themselves in adoration. To the commandment, You shall not take the name of God in vain. Exodus chapter 20 verse 7 is set up in opposition by blaspheming God and his Christ. In many subtle and diabolical ways, even to the even to the reducing of his name indecorously to the level of a brand name of an object of sale and of producing sacrilegious films concerning his life and his divine person. So the com commandment, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. It transforms Sunday into a weekend, into a day of sports, of competition and of entertainment. To the commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. It opposes, it opposes a new model of your family based on cohabitation and even between homosexuals. To the commandment you shall not kill, 
Exodus chapter 20 verse 13, it has succeeded in making abortion legal everywhere, in making euthanasia acceptable, and in causing respect due to the value of human life all but disappear. To the commandment you shall not commit impure acts, Exodus chapter 20 verse 14, it justifies, exalts, and propagates every form of impurity, even to the justification of acts against nature. To the commandments you shall not steal, Exodus chapter 20 verse 15, it works to the end that theft, violence, kidnapping, and robbery spread, every, spread more and more. To the commandment you shall not bear false witness, Exodus chapter 20 verse 16. It asks in such a way that the law of deceit, lying, and duplicity becomes more and more propagated. To the commandment, you shall not covet the goods and the wife of another. Exodus chapter 20 verse 17. It works to corrupt in the depths of the conscience, betraying the mind and the heart of man. In this way, souls become driven along the perverse and wicked road of disobedience to the laws of the Lord, become submerged in sin and are thus prevented from receiving the gifts of grace and of the life of God. To the seven theological and cardinal virtues, which are the fruits of living in the grace of God, Freemasonry counters with the diffusion of the seven capital vices or capital sins, which are the fruits of living habitually in the state of sin. To faith, it opposes pride. To hope, lust. To charity, avarice. To prudence, anger. To fortitude, sloth. To justice, envy. To temperance, gluttony. Whoever becomes a victim of the seven capital sins is gradually led to take away the worship that is due to God alone in order to give it to false divinities who are the very personification of all these vices. And in this consists the greatest and most horrible blasphemy. This is why on every head of the beast there is written a blasphemous name. Each Masonic Lodge has the task of making a different divinity adored. The first head bears the blasphemous name of pride, which opposes itself to the virtue of faith, and leads one to offer worship to the god of human reason and haughtiness, of technology and of progress. The second head bears the blasphemous name of lust, which opposes itself to the virtue of hope and brings one to offer worship to the God of sexuality and of impurity. The third head bears the blasphemous name of avarice, which opposes itself to the virtue of charity and spreads everywhere the worship of the God of money. The fourth head bears the blasphemous name of anger, which opposes itself to the virtue of prudence and leads one to offer worship to the God of discord and division. The fifth head bears the blasphemous name of sloth, which opposes itself to the virtue of fortitude and disseminates the worship of the idol of fear, of public opinion, and of exploitation. The sixth head bears the blasphemous name of envy, which opposes itself to the virtue of proof of justice and leads one to offer worship to the idol of violence and war. The seventh head bears the blasphemous name of gluttony, which opposes itself to the virtue of temperance and leads one to the worship, to offer worship to the so highly exalted idol of hedonism, of materialism, and of pleasure. The task of the Masonic Lodges is that of working today with great astuteness to bring humanity everywhere to this day the holy law of God, to walk in open opposition to the Ten Commandments, and to take away the worship due to God alone in order to offer it to certain false idols we become extolled and adored by an ever-increasing number of people, reason, flesh, money, discord, domination, violence, pleasure. Thus, souls are 
precipitated into the dark slavery of evil, of vice, and of sin. And at the moment of death and of the judgment of God, into the pool of eternal fire, which is hell. Now you understand how in these times against the terrible and insidious attack of the black beast, namely of Missouri, my immaculate heart becomes your refuge and the sure road which brings you to God. In my immaculate heart, there is delineated the tactic, tactics made use of by your heavenly mother to fight back against and to defeat the subtle plot made use of by the black beast. For this reason, I am training all my children to observe the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments of God, to leave the gospel to the letter, to make frequent use of the sacraments, especially those of penance and Eucharistic communion, as necessary helps in order to remain in the grace of God, to practice the virtues vigorously, to walk always along the path of goodness, of love, of purity, and of holiness. Thus, I'm making use of you, my little children, who have consecrated yourselves to me, to unmask all these subtle snares which the black beast sets for you, and to make futile, in the end, the great attack which Missouri has launched today against Christ and his church. And in the end, especially in his greatest defeat, there will appear in all his splendor the triumph of my immaculate heart in the world. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Now, the message you just listened to now was given true locution to Reverend Father Stefano Gobi, the director of the Maria Movement of priests in Italy and you can see how clev clearly without compromise or distortion the Blessed Mother has explained a central part of the book of Apocalypse in the third section of uh, Apocalypse chapter 12 we see the battle we see, read about the woman clothed with the sun standing on the moon, crowned with 12 stars, and um, clothed with the sun. That, that is key. So, a lady says she has been clothed with the Holy Ghost and with the divine power of the Almighty God. St. John said, I saw another great sign in heaven, the huge red dragon, waiting for this woman to give birth. This huge dragon manifested himself in the person of King Herod in an attempt to kill the infant Jesus at his birth. Of course, he couldn't succeed. And then he tried, you know, because of this, um, we we'll see that even in our time today, as the book of Apocalypse says, uh, the dragon poured a flood of water in order to uh, bury the woman who gave birth to the child. But that the earth helped the woman by absorbing the water, swallowed the water, and that the woman was given the two wings of the great ego, which our lady say represent faith and, and charity. Now this has continued even through the centuries. As she has explained here, the huge red dragon represents godlessness. It represents the theism, it represents the false belief, the false ideology that there is no God which was spread uh, by co communist, uh, the communism, you know, in the Soviet Union and so on. And this is why at Fatima, the Blessed Mother requested the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart. That if not, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world. And later, Jesus explained to Sister Lucia, yes, the Holy Father will do it, but it will be too late. Indeed, it's too late. The errors of atheism has already spread all over the world. Even among great countries that gave, has spread the Catholic faith across the globe. You go to those countries today, People hardly ever believe in God. What they believe is in science, in progress, in money, in technology, and yes, the devil. And this is uh, something that we need to be very conscious about. 
almost everywhere you go in order to get high positions you you are forced one way or the other and um, to become a member of a satanic cult and the same mother said to the age of the huge red dragon comes the black beast that if the work of the huge red dragon is to deny god that of the black beast is not to deny him but to blaspheme him and specifically contradicts each of the ten commandments as well as the seven uh, theological and cardinal virtues as we just heard in the message that has just been read so this is the game plan of the evil one and you must be conscious of this first of all the solution lies in getting consecrated to the immaculate heart she has consistently told us that her immaculate heart is made for protection in the pressure of blood messages we are told clearly that an ocean of the precious blood flows inside the immaculate heart of mary this is the first step but beyond this it talks about the sacraments especially that of penance and the holy eucharist it talks about practice of virtue it explains clearly how each of these vices oppose the seven theological and cardinal virtues to faith it opposes masonry opposes it with pride to hope it opposes it with lust and this is all kind of propagation of pornography impurity sodomy and so on comes in to charity to oppose it with avarice selfishness greed so it goes on and on and on to temperance, it opposes with what? Materialism and all sorts of things. Jesus said temperance leads you to know when and to what extent to acquire. Let us quickly take a look at the precious blood message of 10th December 19... Uh, sorry. Pressure blood message of 12 September 2000. The title is My Children Have Chosen My Warriors for the Great Battle. During an event, our prayers of adoration, I saw a vision of the holy agonizing face which emanated from the blessed sacrament, which was exposed on the altar. He kept silent for some time and finally said, My children, I have told you this before. I am now repeating it as a final warning. I say to you, great is the battle which I am leading you into. I have called you before to come and join my warriors. Now I am choosing my warriors among you and among my faithful lovers around the world. Children, the number I find as soldiers, the number I found as soldiers is very few. Even among you, my apostles, whom I called, where then will I go to look for my warriors? I say to you, great is the battle to which I am leading my warriors. I am leading my warriors to fight the red dragon, the beast, and his agents. I am leading my warriors to fight against the cosmic powers of this dark age and give light to the world. I am leading my warriors to fight the rulers and powers of darkness in these ungodly days of yours. I am leading my warriors to fight the communists and their agents in my holy church. Children, I am leading my warriors to fight against the modernist powers and their heresies. I am leading them to the war front to give them victory. I am leading them to usher in the new era of peace. I firmly promise to give them victory. My warriors will have one sign through which they will conquer. The sign is the cross of perfection which I have given to you. Through this sign, I say you will conquer. It's an abridgment here, and I will conclude. I love you all, so I bless you immediately. The vision passed. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. First of all, the Blessed Mother have said that the devil desires to make everybody on earth a member of one satanic cult or the other. And that is why major places of work in many places demand this as a condition for employment. 
for business, especially great uh, business endeavors. And this is also the reason why she brought the consecration to the Immaculate Heart. She throws her minds back to Genesis 3.15 where God said, I'll put a enmity between you and the woman. Between her seed and your seed, he was talking to the serpent. She shall crush your head and you will bruise her heels. That is the enmity. There is no in between. For men, our lady say, it's either you come to Jesus through me by consecrating to my immaculate heart. I promise you, I assure you, uh, Satan will eventually pluck you off. There is no neutrality in this battle. Now look at how the agonizing Jesus, I summarized all the messages we have just uh, been reading. That he is gathering his warriors, his soldiers, to fight who? He enumerates who these enemies are. That is leading them to fight the red dragon. And this is what we read in the first message, a teasing. But he added the red dragon, the beast, and his agent. It's just a summary of all, all we have been reading since this program, this particular program began. I'm leading my warriors to fight against the cosmic powers of this dark age and give light to the who are the cosmic powers. Blessed Ketine marriage. Enumerates that explains that after the rebellion by some of the angels in heaven, that a few of them had slight repentance, and therefore, when the angels were being cast out, the fallen angels were being cast out down to hell, those of them who had slight repentance did not fall down completely, and that they are hanging out somewhere in the outer space, they are hanging out there, and she called them the planetary spirits. He said, technically, they are not yet full devils. But they promote certain vices. He said, I saw that each man born into this world is accompanied by a good angel as well as one of these planetary spirits. Each of them specializes in a particular vice. And they nudge on they are victim towards that particular vice. And she explains the solution. Apart from prayer, rosary, consecration, it's a fasting. But especially, say the highest means of combating them is through reception of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. They promote a lot of darkness. According to that mystic, they are the one responsible for the construction of the false church, the false one world global church, where eventually every religion is expected to come in and housed. And this is terrible to say, housed by the Catholic walls. By this time, the few remnants of Revelation to Apocalypse 12 would have gone underground. That's the remnant church. There are those who will remain faithful to the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the book of Apocalypse said they did not love, love their life unto death. They were ready to suffer anything in order to remain faithful to the truth. Jesus says in the pressure of blood, although the world will attack the truth, it will remain unchanged. If you change it, it's no longer truth. For it to be called truth, it must remain as given. So it is these planetary spirits that are responsible for the building of the false church. Let's say Katrina Marriage say, I saw the builders of this false church. They tried and tried and tried. Almost everything they did could not succeed because there was no assistance from heaven. There was no assistance from the holy angels that I saw them try to light up incense. They did all they could to make the incense light. They blew it so hard until tears came out from the, their eyes. It simply could not light. And when they build up to a point, an angel will simply use his rod, tap it a little, and the thing will fall down. These are the groups that Jesus is referring to here as the cosmic powers of this dark age. 
and give light to the world. It's one of the reasons to why he asks us to say the Leonine exorcism prayer, raising the pressure of blood agonizing crucifix, uh, recite that exorcism prayer of the 18th century. And he said, whenever this prayer is said, darkness will give way to light. I'm leading my warriors to fight the rulers and powers of darkness in these ungodly days of yours. I'm leading my warriors to fight the communists and their agents in my holy church. Many people do not know that these atheist communist people, many of them many years ago, entered the seminary, from there enlisted, got ordained as priests. And today they are in power, doing whatever they like. Leading souls astray. He said, I'm leading my warriors to fight against the modernist powers and their heresies. Modernism is a heresy. This has been the teaching of Pope St. Pius X. He says, modernism is a heresy. Many of the modernist things you are seeing today, within the Caliphate, going on at mass, changing things, are actually heretical practices. They are huge weeds growing within the garden. At the proper time, the master will give order and these weeds will be uprooted. I'm leading them to the war front to give them victory. Victory is coming. All that is going on behind the scene, planning for a new one world religion, one world church, blessing of sodomy and so on. The day is coming when these things will be turned to ashes. And those who propagate it will be held to account. I am leading them to usher in the new era of peace. I firmly promise to give them victory. Say they have one sign through which they shall conquer the cross of perfection. For those who may not know, uh, the cross of co perfection consists of forgiveness, humility, and truth. And then it is sealed with love, forgiveness, humility and truth in some future program we'll do uh, a talk concerning the cross of perfection but in the meantime keep in mind that it says that it is through this sign that you will conquer the cross of perfection another uh, sign that will help the rose of perfect purity which jesus later uh, gave those who renew their consecration to the pressure of blood after three years instead of the, the cross the agonizing crucifix they receive the rose of perfect purity upon with the virtues uh, as stated. A lady have already said that it is primarily this, the Holy Spirit that will give force to the defeat of the red dragon and the sergeants. In all this disobedience of the Ten Commandments and promotion of the seven vices that contradict the seven theological and cardinal virtues we are called to repent, do penance, go to confession, above all, to make reparation for sin. Our Blessed Mother said she mourns the amount of sin in the world and the failure of her children to make reparation for sin. Those who hear or pray the anguish appeals, the reparation prayer and the pressure of blood, has some promises. There are few, but very powerful. Children, whenever the reparation prayer is said with love, I promise to convert 12 most hardened sinners in the world. You can imagine that. 12 most hardened sinners. I will allow my pressure blood to flow into every soul that hears this prayer said. Their love for me will grow. I will forgive the sins of a nation that turns back to me through this prayer. They will not suffer the weight of the causes due to their sins. So there you go, the teaching concerning the Ten Commandments, um, the seven and the seven theological and cardinal virtues. May our Lady the Co-Redemptrix, Mediatrix of all graces and advocates, to the power of the most precious blood and his five and the holy wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ, give victory. To all his children who seek to be free 
and delivered and to serve the only true God. God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.